Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to Spirit Speakeasy. I'm Joy Giovanni, joyful medium. I'm a working psychic medium, energy healer, and spiritual gifts mentor. This podcast is like a seat at the table in a secret club, but with mediums, mystics, and the spiritual luminaries of our time. So come behind the velvet ropes with me and see inside my world as I chat insider style with profoundly gifted souls. We go deep, share juicy stories, laugh a lot, and it wouldn't be a speakeasy without great insider secrets and tips. You might even learn that you have some gifts of your own. So step inside the spirit speakeasy. Hey, beautiful soul, welcome in to Spirit Speakeasy. For those of you that are listening on audio only on your favorite podcast platform and are not seeing the video, I am decked out in everything blue today because we are going to have a very special return guest, Nancy Rebecca, who channels the blue light celestial beings and is going to tell us the blue light update, what the beings have shared with her, what we need to know for the remainder of 2024 and how to be prepared for 2025. As you know, I have lots of questions and as Nancy shares, I'm going to be really seeing what we can glean, what we can discern, if there's anything coming up that she can share with us. So I'm pretty excited for this conversation today and I'm so grateful that Nancy has agreed to come back and share with us. She's getting quite popular and has a very busy schedule. So we were very lucky to get back with us today, Nancy Rebecca, who's going to share all about the Blue Light Collective Beings. Hey, beautiful souls, welcome back or welcome in for another episode of Spirit Speakeasy. Today is a very exciting returning guest. I'm going to do an abbreviated version of her intro. She's been with us twice before, and I am so excited to see what she has brought to share today. I've even resisted talking to her before <laughs> before us all talking together because I just can feel it brimming over. Um, so in just a moment here, we're going to welcome Nancy Rebecca. She is an RN and intuitive psychic development teacher for over 25 years. So that means Nancy can see the physical and the spiritual worlds at the same time. And in 2017, Nancy's experience took a turn in a direction that she didn't expect when the blue light celestial star beings visited her and asked her to help prepare the world for an upcoming time of great change on earth. And since then, their guidance and instruction have led her to the farthest reaches like China, and places within the U.S. And if you missed the previous two times that we chatted with Nancy, you can check these out. I'll link them in the show notes. But she really shares a deep dive about her journey if you want to hear that, which she also does on her website, which I'll also link. And then she really explains who the blue light beings are. Um, But I'm so excited to have back with us to share the newest communications from the blue light beings and what we need to know for the end of 2024 through the spring of 2025. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Nancy Rebecca. Oh, thanks, Joy. Um, I'm always excited to be back. There's a lot of information that's coming in right now. So I'm really looking at this as an opportunity, as I shared with you before uh, on your podcast. This would be kind of the uh, kind of more blue light details than I have put out there at this time because there's so much coming in on a daily basis. But you always ask the best questions. So I I feel like you help to kind of flush out what even I may not be able to fully conceptualize from what the celestial beings of light are talking about. So I'm excited to see what what unfolds today. That's a very big compliment. Will you, for anyone who's brand, brand new, before they have time to go back and listen to those other episodes, will you just quickly Mm -hmm. give us a little, I don't know, a bio of who the blue light beings are maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So um, just to let, you know, people know a little bit about me. I I mean, I'm definitely a registered nurse, retired, and um, I worked for 25 plus years. What really interests me, where my passion is, still is, is the health of the human energy field and how, how we can work with our energy to really help bring health and wellness to all aspects of our life. And uh, the Blue Beings of Light came in in the year 2017. It was kind of what I call kind of minding my own business, doing my traditional daily meditation. Uh, my eyes were closed, but I could hear this sound of, 
a, a kind of describe it of almost like a plane going overhead that you can hear off in the distance, but it came towards me. And next thing you know, it was even very loud in the room that I was in. And, uh, and then I felt, you know how with your eyes closed, you can feel when someone's standing next to you, especially if you're a mom with kids and they're like, mom, can I go to Jimmy's house? Like you can feel them. And it, that's what it felt like. And so I kind of opened my eyes and I looked around the room and I had to look really tall. I was actually sitting on the floor and, uh, there were 12 blue very tall blue beings of light. Now, what I will say to make it really simple, they look very close to like in the movie, The Avatar. Uh, so very luminescent, very light. Um, and it wasn't like I could hear words, but I could hear a frequency. You know how when the pitch changes in your yeah. ear, but for me, it sounded more like whales and dolphins, kind of that sonar. And then it's like I would get downloaded. And they basically said, we need you to help prepare the world. It's going to be going through big changes. We need you to talk about this. Uh, and when I asked, first of all, this is my usual response is, I think you've got the wrong address. And the, and the reason why I say that is because I was never into, not even heavily into astrology or different planets or constellations or, you know, I wasn't into any of that. I'm all about the human body. But anyway, they said, you needed to go to China and I could feel it in my bones. They said, you will find the answers in China. And, um, so that was the next step, but yeah, it's unfolded in bigger ways. So here we are now and wow, it's totally different than where it started. And you, I think you previously told us that the blue light celestial beings are Pleiadian. Is that right? Syrian. Syrian. Okay. However, that <clears throat> that's okay because it's, um, because it came through in the different pyramids. So what has been I'll tell you what the blue light beings said. What they're all about is when this blue frequency comes in, it dissolves all illusion, enhances all truth, and helps move things to the forefront so justice will be served. So, so that, that general message has never, ever changed. Now, what I've learned is because they started coming through the pyramids and I have blogs and I have yeah. YouTube videos about that, but all the pyramids they started amplifying through are aligned with the constellation of Orion. Okay. And so, so I know them as Syrian and I've since learned that I have star seed DNA genetics that are Syrian. And if you want to know kind of what Syrians are like, they're more like Spock in Star Trek, you know, Just like to clarify for, for anyone who's listening, you mean Syrians like Sirius, the star and not Syria, the, the pl not the country. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Just to clarify. Yeah. And it, yes. And so if you are familiar and some of the young people may not be, but Star Trek and Spock with the pointed ears, he's like, that's not logical. And so this is very much like the star beings are like, why be emotional about this? This, everything is shifting and changing. Now, Pleiadians, on the other hand, can still work with the light of blue. They're very creative. They're very emotional. They're very passionate, you know, so, but they can still work with blue. And this is what I learned over time. So this is the example they gave me. It's like Christ force energy. Like we know that often to be gold, be golden. And when we think of like Jesus and we see those pictures, there's always this golden halo and this golden light. And Jesus has this gold patina of light that's all golden. And so whenever I heard of the words Christ force energy, I always thought that's Jesus until the spirit world said, oh, oh, no, 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 Nancy, you've gotten a little confused here. It's the Christ consciousness essence is what Jesus loved to work with. 
It's so it's available to all of us. Yeah. All right. So the blue light beings gave me that example and they said the blue light is similar. It is a level of consciousness and any person in the world can choose to work with this blue light to include star people from different galaxies and different planets. So the ones specifically I'm talking to are Sir from Sirius. That's very yeah. cool. That's a lot more information, I think, even in the way you just gave it than we had last time that anyone can, you know, I, we knew it, that it was going to affect everyone, right? right? But I don't know if at that point you were, you had figured out or we're working with it in a way that like, okay, let me teach everyone how to bring this light in and work with it. That's really, yes. cool. that's a big growth point. I love it. Yeah, it is a big growth point because this is kind of what kind of pulls us into what's happening now. <clears throat> So they said they would come through three times. Once that was done in 2023, I thought one and done. Now we're done. Now they're going to go somewhere else and my life will go back to nursey energy field kind of things. And that's not what happened. <laughs> it's just that, that those beams of intense blue light are preparing us for the next level. So this next level uh, a wave came through in July and they call it the blue light of pure truth, purity of truth, like this elixir of purity of truth, you know, like you could drink it and you can't lie, you know, it's like you, you can only tell truth. All right. So this started coming in a little bit in July. So it's like giving us little dropper fulls of truth because we might be all excited about yeah, in politics or in banking or, you know, in the educational system or like, we can be all excited. Yeah. Yeah. We want that truth to be revealed. But what we're not realizing in July is our truth was going to be revealed. And that truth is if you've been thinking you're an inadequate being and suddenly the truth is being revealed, that you are an incredible, amazing light, that's going to change your paradigm, especially if you lived off of that diet of, I am less than everyone else. Yeah. So the next wave came in August. So July kind of gives us a little prep. August gives us a little prep. And now by the time you're all listening to this recording, so I have, uh, October 17th is when the third gigantic, almost tsunami wave of truth, purity of truth is flowing through and will continue into the spring. Well, probably for the next three years, I keep getting this three years of truth, but we're ready for it. And and I think, sorry to interrupt you, I think the, the last time when you were talking about these waves coming in, you described them as coming through the entire planet, right? So not Right. They were us, like a laser beam. Right. Like doing that exploded. Kind of yeah. Yes. So, and it was shattering. Like if you think of a black ball of glass, like onyx or obsidian, and it just shatters into a trillion pieces, that's what the blue light did then. Wow. And, and now it's so this fascinating is fascinating because we yeah. have, you know, to your point, we have had things bubbling up in politics and in, you know, world news and in current events in the U.S. certainly, and I'm sure other countries have their own things happening and in our personal lives. So just kind of thinking over the last six months to a year, and how has your personal life shift? What have you seen? But the part of it, just as a little side note, that's so fascinating to me. I mean, all of it, but one segment is that. It's interesting because when I did the eight themes for the eight year, one of the themes for an eight year is truth coming to light, like things being mm. revealed, you know, those type of things. And this next event that you're talking about, which is right after we're recording, is on the Aries full moon. So wow. it's fascinating yeah. to me how these things line up with the, with the different ways we understand energy, with the ways the planetary alignments or the star alignments are just, I don't know, it just fascinates me. Yeah, it is fascinating. And, and someone, you know, because there's countries that are at war. And yeah. I remember Pam Gregory, the astrologer, 
who, who said, well, of course, you know, we've got the Aries Mars combo one, two punch, you know, kind of thing. And that, that really can really cause fires to get sparked yeah. in us as individuals, but also in world countries. And, uh, so this blue, yeah, these blue waves, I don't, they're not necessarily calming things down, but it is a calm photonic elixir of light and peace and almost like this soothing of the wounds, yeah. if I can say it that way, you know, like somebody pulling out a shard of glass that yeah. got stuck in your arm and this blue light is like, okay, let's let go of those shards of glass of your life and let's start bringing in the soothing energies. It's much better than the visual I had of like a festering wound and you want to comfort <laughs> it and soothe it, but you need to also clear it and, and clean yeah. it and let it heal. And sometimes that means uncomfortable things coming to the surface, yeah. right? So that's Yeah. We well, are. we've been... We've been dealing with festering wounds for the last 10, 15 yeah. years. It's been tough for everyone and not just us, but the people in charge too. If you think about presidents or vice presidents or CEOs or, you know, heads of, you know, Tibetan, you know, the Dalai Lama, like every, everybody's going through a growth. A I know. Of wars in the last 10 years, a lot of yeah. events, a lot of things coming to light about the way it was done in the past. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. really right. Well, and a lot of times we think it's all about us, you know, that we're the only one that's going through this pain and that's very Capricorn. That's very Capricorn where it's like, you know, it's like the top down authority. It's very linear. It's very top to bottom bottom way of thinking. And if you're at the bottom, then you keep thinking from the bottom. And if you're at the top, you think from the top, but as you know, Pluto moves into Aquarius, which I've been counting the milliseconds for that to happen is it's all horizontal. It's like everyone's going to move into that multiple, multiple dimensionality. And what does that show up like in the symptoms of our life? Like in the day to day, what little changes or what things do you think we'll notice as a result? Well, the one thing about lies is th this blue light. It's like, you're not going to be able to lie. It's, you're just not going to be able to lie. And it, it's like, um, so that's going to change. And people are like, well, why would I want to lie? Well, how many of us, when you're with your partner, you're with your friend, it's like, are you bugged? Are you annoyed with me? No, not yeah, at all. Yeah. Like how many of us say that? Yeah. It's like, you're not going to be able to do that anymore. You might say, yeah, I'm really, the truth of the matter is I'm really bugged by you, but it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, like that, that's how our communication is going to, uh, that's how it's going to be. And we won't be able to lie. Sure. I'm happy in my relationship. I can live with this. You know, everybody has to compromise. Relationships aren't easy. You know, you're the truth of the matter is this is rough. And, and I don't, it's not, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this for another 20 years. It's like, I am not going to be able to do this for another 20 years. And yeah. So you're going to get quicker at those decisions, but let's talk about globally. You know, we've been having these natural disasters and mother earth is going through the changes, but it's about, if we're looking at earth in relationship to that, the universe, the universe, the earth can no longer remain compromised. You know, it, it just can't keep taking the hits, you know, like yeah. the Duracell battery, you know, rabbit. It's like, you know, takes a licking, but keeps on ticking. Like that's just not going to work for earth anymore. Yeah. So we're going to notice that. So a lot of people, and just say one more thing, you're going to be able to see truth. So you're talking to a friend and they're not being forthcoming with you. And you're like, 
you're not being totally straight with me yeah. where before you would have believed what they were saying. So, so those are the ways it's going to change in that way. Okay. Let me ask a quick question about that because I, I want to just highlight or get your opinion on if I'm talking to a friend in this example and I'm realizing, okay, something's incongruent here. This math is not mathing. Um, is it still my free will to, to address it or will that be where I can't hold it in anymore and I'm going to have to address it kindly in that moment? Or do I still have the free will to not deal with it, not work with that? That I'm curious about that. Yeah. So that was actually going to be the next thing that oh, I was going to say. No, no, no. Because that helps flush it out. Right. So when we're thinking about it's, it's not linear, it's not black, it's not white. Yeah. It's not like I need to get in your face right now and call you on your stuff, you know, or I need to ignore it and let it fester and make me sick like that. That's moving this way. So when you have Pluto and Aquarius, Aquarius is all about unity, consciousness. We are stronger together than we are apart. We're all floating in the river of life. We're all moving in the same direction, but it's like, yeah, that's fine and dandy, but how do I work with that in the real world? So what happens is now you're talking to your friend, you know, they're not being forthcoming, but now you've got the horizontal perspective and you're like, oh, I can tell my friend's really suffering right now. And, um, and my sense is my friend just wants me to listen, eat, you know, just to sit and listen and just to ground, like you're going to get like all the answers at the same time time. And then you have free will to make the choice. It's like, oh, if I confront them, that's not what they need right now. And I'm, I was called by spirit to be here and be witness to what they're going through. So you're going to get that full. As you're saying it, the, the image that I'm getting kind of in my mind's eye is almost like an accordion folder where it's like, we'll just have more of those alternate potentials available. Like, oh, maybe it's not about that. They don't want to tell me, maybe, maybe it's about, you know, they just need this to be this today. Maybe it's about they yes. have something going on. Maybe it's about, so just more awareness of alternate possibilities of, so that's what you mean by that lateral kind of spreading out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like Okay, yeah. Well, well the, that, so that's cool. yes. And the example often I give is you're invited to a uh, potluck, um, where everybody's, you know, maybe it's a, a reunion of your family or your class or whatever. And, you know, there's going to be a hundred people there and you've got this long table and everybody brings their dish to share. Well, if your nose is pressed up against that tablecloth, you're not even going to be able to see what food's right next to you. You literally have to stand up and you literally make that choice, that horizontal choice to look at all that's available here and all the desserts are down there. And it's like, do I want to have the dessert before I have the protein like that? You get to choose, but you get to see all the dishes on the table at the same time. And I know that sounds fantastical, but where before it felt like it was 20 years before we started seeing any shifts or 30 years, now it's going to be happening like in this next three years, it's, it's going to be rising. And you would think it would be confusing, but the beauty about what the blue light beings are saying is we're given the consciousness to go with it would be nice. I mean, that would, that feels nice because I feel like in my work and the clients I'm seeing a lot of the time in this last year, I have felt this energy of people just feeling like they're bumping up against their own walls. Like they can't find their yeah. own information. Like they need you to tell them the answer. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, and it's sticky. It feels sticky yeah. to me. And I would love if we all just had a little bit more of that expanded, you know, backing up from the tablecloth view. I think that'd be, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this news, Nancy. <laughs> well, good. Well, it's, um, it's like when I said, we're given the consciousness, it's like you're handed a pair of shoes with shoestrings. And before we had to have someone teach us how to tie the shoes. Now we're being provided the consciousness to tie our own shoes. 
but we've been so much in the habit of somebody teaching us how to tie the shoes or somebody teaching us how to button our shirt or somebody teaching us how to put on makeup or how to fix our hair or how to add up our bank account. And now spirit is like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's changing now. Your spirit is going to be providing all of your answers. So it's a, it's a bad habit <laughs> that we need to break, you know, of relying on everyone else. So it's going to take a little time. And as Pam Gregory says, kind of like, this is the last push. And boy, our mental minds are going almost insane. That's why we're experiencing these mental health complexities. It's like, you know, it's intensifying before it relaxes. And I'm like a storm, like a wave, you know, you have those peak high 200 foot high waves and it's just like they're battering the side of the ship and then everything's going to calm. So we're going to have to create those calming moments for ourselves okay. in the midst of the storm. So I'll make a note, make a note of that mental note or otherwise. So that'll be our responsibility is to find yeah. ways to self-soothe. And what does that, I mean, does that look like meditation? Does it look like any of the tools that, that anyone can find are good? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Uh, well, what I know, like for people who are more, they tend to be more empathic, meaning physically focused, uh, that, that they doing some kind of physical exercise is going to yes. be really helpful doing yoga or going for a walk while you listen to a relaxing meditation. But at some point, maybe sitting on the ground by a tree, just giving yourself a few minutes of silence now, for others who are quite mental, you know, they may find those binaural beats where yeah. it's like the Monroe Institute came out with those, I think, in the 80s, where it helps balance the brain. So there's something different for everyone. But because I've been teaching intuitive development through a form of what I call active meditation, this is what spirit always tells me, Nancy if you can just get them to close their eyes, then their spirit can take over being their teacher. And so they didn't say, if you can get them to close their eyes for an hour, they didn't say close their eyes for a half hour. It's even a minute or two minutes. Your spirit can download you with just the perfect answer and the perfect resolution to a problem. Because spirit doesn't know, I know you know this, you know, yeah. and a lot of people know the spirit doesn't know time or space, but what does that really look like? Yeah. Well, and to your point, I, I say it here all the time. I get a lot of my inspiration or intuition. I do a, a meditation practice daily, but that's typically not when the information is coming in. It's usually when I'm either going for, I, I need to move my body, either going for a walk or dancing in the kitchen or doing dishes or, yeah. you know, it's something mundane. Yeah. So yeah. I need both sides of that as a person. Yeah. Maybe that won't always be true, but yeah. I guess for each person figuring out what feels good for them, when can, when do they feel yeah. like they can get a moment of closed eyes or br breathing or whatever it is. Right. So if I could just respond to what you yeah. just said. So what happens when you have your daily practice a minute, you get the download it's dropped into your energy field and now you need to start moving to integrate it into the body. Yeah, so it sense. is coming through yeah, that yeah, way, but course. you Things know, happening in the background for sure. Right. Yeah. And dishes are my favorite. I mean, I'll go to people's houses. I'm like, can I wash your dishes while you're cooking? I'm like, no, 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 you go sit. And I'm like, no, you do not understand. It helps me so much to wash, yeah. get my hands in water. It's yeah. Easy work. I mean, I had a massage therapy practice for years. I'd be folding towels and sheets and <laughs> it'd be then cause I'd have an hour of folding to do. Yeah. I'd listen to a, at the time it was like the Hay House spiritual radio podcasts and, and, yeah. and just, you know, so yeah. any, anything I guess is kind of one of your, one of your homeworks listeners and viewers. Well, and I totally thing, agree right? with you. Every one what works for you is not going to work for me. What works for me is not going to work for someone else. That's why tuning into spirit. And if you have a hunch about something, follow it. And if it works, yeah. great. If it doesn't work, let it go and follow your hunch about something else. But yeah. 
quickly, and another it, thing I like to encourage people is if something works for you for a while, it, it may not always work as your right. energy you know, moves and changes and grows and you might be ready for something different or so don't beat yourself up if it's like, oh, that used to work and now it doesn't. You know, that Nancy's here to tell us how everything's changing. So everything's changing. It's so. rapidly, rapidly changing. And I, I, I've had this, if I, I've had this conflict and I know I've talked to you about it before, Joy, but this, this conflict of being very, you know, boots on the ground, feet on the ground, grounded. Yeah. I love to work with medicine. I'm a nurse. I was a hospice nurse, intensive care nurse. And then all of a sudden the blue beings of light come in and it kind of blows my mind open. But so I was having this, what I call, you know, my heart to heart with the God of my heart. And I, I said, I, I'm struggling because I don't want to let go of the medical part. Yeah. I, I love that. I love being a nurse. I don't want to let go of that. And and the, the voice came through and said, whoever said you were being asked to let go of that, we're yeah. just asking you to prepare for miracles to happen wow. in medicine. And they didn't teach you about miracles 30 years ago in their medical books. So, yeah. and frequencies as they go up, people are going to have spontaneous physical, emotional, and mental health. And for my logical mind, it wants to say that's not possible. But when I feel it in my bones, I know, and it's going to happen. It's happening already. Yeah. But how do you, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do you define miracle? Because I don't it, know if I have it's a, a question good question for that. Right. That's a good question. I guess it's, I don't know, because I don't know that it has to have a certain, maybe it's a, a mystical happening that is, you know, unexplainable fully by humankind that has a spark of divinity and creates some expansion or healing, maybe. I don't know. That's a really good question. Well, and so I, I will invite all your listeners to define that for yourself, because I had to ask, so what is a miracle? And, um, we're going to get to learn what a miracle is. I feel like I've had lots of versions of it. Cause I mean, there's been times when I was a single mom where a miracle felt like a check that just happened into my mailbox that I wasn't expecting. And now I can like do this emergency repair on my car. But other times it's been a big miracle. Like some, there was an accident and someone was safe that perhaps couldn't have been, you know? So exactly. It's like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I'm so. I'm excited to learn about miracles, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's a, <laughs> I feel like it's just a little scary too. Well, we've kind of taken it off the shelf, right? Yeah. You know, and, and now the blue beings of light are asking us to put it back and on the table as an option Yeah. that a miracle can come to us. Yeah, because we have as a collective kind of, I feel the energy a little more hopeless, a little more like, oh, I don't know if I don't know if I believe in that anymore type of a thing. So I like that idea of putting miracles back on the table. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Really cool. Is that something that's going to shift after this? I think you said November 19th, that Pluto into Aquarius transit. Do we see a big, I mean, I just... So everyone knows often we kind of start to feel these things in the, in the days and weeks before then the astrological or whatever, um, blue light event happens. And then we continue to feel the energy almost roll out. It might not be in one, like, so what I say, like, well, we're going to feel it around this time. Don't think, I mean, it's going to be one, like turn the corner shift. It does spread out for us over time. Yeah. Um, but yeah. is that sort of the crux of it is that's when we're moving into this phase of, not being able to have the the disillusion anymore and being more honest even with ourselves and yeah so my and I've asked similar questions because I know what that's like you'll have that rise and it's like oh thank goodness you know and then you wake up tomorrow and it's like okay well I'm still back to my same problems I ever you know that I ever had but what I notice about coming back to the same problems that I had before, I don't linger there as long. So people have to really <clears throat> kind of 
you know, sit with that. It's like, oh gosh, that would have taken me out for three months before. And now it only takes me out for a few days. Yeah, so, yeah. So I don't linger there as long or the solution to the issue is coming faster. Mm -hmm. However, this is a game changer right now. This, this kind of phase that we're in this November, uh, December, I've already named December as the miracle star. Uh, and so just for your listeners, I have not come to the end of my deep dive on this one, but when they said, we want to call it the miracle star. And so I was like, all right, so is this the miracle star of Bethlehem? Is this the miracle (laughs) star that led the three wise men to Jesus? Is this the, you know, so this is what I do. Like I start asking these questions So then I went to look at, and I'm like, what do you mean the star of Bethlehem was not a star? You know, so it's like you start finding all the science and the research done behind it. So that's where I stopped. Okay. (laughs) I was like, my whole life I've been told it's a star, and now somebody's telling me it's not a star, that it was two planets magnifying each other. So anyway, I, I just closed the book. I closed my research. I will address it later on. Okay. But for any of you listeners out there, before December 21st, do your own research about what this miracle star is going to be. Do a meditation around it. I'm yeah. certainly going to, but it's supposed to be a really big time of miracles. Okay. Well, I think that's, I think I could be available for miracles to be on the table. So I'm excited about what what that could maybe mean for us. (laughs) Yeah. And then, um, so it, it's smoother. It's not like these jagged highs and jagged lows, hope and hopeless and hope there, everything seems to be smoothing out. But when we get to This, the blue beings of light are calling this a preparation period because when we get into the spring of 2025, it's like uh, this cosmic collective of consciousness and the blue light codes that are coming through are incredible. And this photonic elixir of plasma light of expanded consciousness is incredible. We, we just don't know, Joy. We've never lived through this time before. I guess not. I mean, I guess I think, I don't know. I watch a lot of the like ancient happenings shows and they believe that these things have happened previously in different ways. And now we're coming to this new time with this civilization of humanity. And um, it's interesting because as you know very well, we can fall down lots of rabbit holes on the yeah. internet. And so kind of like yours to your point about the star and the planets and it's like, okay, so then this leads to this and then this to this. And is there, it, what do we mean by multidimensional? What do we mean by light elixir? What you just said, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. okay, what does that, what does that mean exactly? And Yeah. Well, and we don't, the, Light beings in general, guides, angels, ascended masters are always saying, Nancy, all of you on the earth right now are creating the language for the future. So we don't have a language for it right now. And so that's where, like with the miracle star, it's like close the book, put it away, go into meditation, get your answers from spirit, because we don't have a lot of... We have some knowledge, but not a lot of knowledge about what's going to be happening. That knowledge probably died with Lemuria and Atlantis. And and I'm told there were thousands of high-level mastery, not universes, but civilizations that existed before. Not just, we just know of Lemuria and Atlantis because they're the most recent ones. Mm -hmm. But there's thousands that existed before then and they have that knowledge and we have access to that knowledge. We just have to go into meditation and talk to, I know you guys are going to say, talk to a Lemurian, talk to an Atlantean, talk to a blue light being and they're wanting me to teach people how to talk to 
blue beings of light. So I think that's really fascinating. So is this part of back to kind I think kind of where where this where I derailed us, is this part of the surges that the planet's receiving? Kind of that again, everyone knows I complain about the language all the time. So it's funny that you just said that because it's not quite right. Is this part right. of that moving towards this more information, expansion, all the waves of light codes that are coming into the planet. I know you said that the summer there were two. Have we had the third or is that is that this right. Third? So the third is October 17th. Okay. We usually and so now yeah. yeah. And so that was the third. There's going to be another one in March. And this is the thing about the plasma and the light codes are providing us the information to be able to understand and integrate how things are unfolding. And that requires some trust and faith. Yeah. And to think one minute, I mean, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit, but one minute been too afraid to fly on a plane and the next minute we know how to build a plane. Like, yeah, that sounds a little too fantastical and it can be that fantastical, but there's going to be other subtle ways where we will have those expanded views of consciousness and in medicine and in science, holy smokes in technology. Yeah. What I've learned, and I feel like what my guides have shown me over and over for these types of what's coming next conversations that I know we both have with them, it's, they always say like you're, you're minimizing it to, to fit into your human understanding and it's not going to show up in the way that your mind is trying to rationalize it. So I've learned that like, okay, it can be possible because it's not linear and literal in the way that I'm understanding this example that I'm being given versus, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's, it's yeah, like, it's, it'll, it'll be there, but it might, it's not going to show up exactly how we maybe expect or, or thought, or and maybe it'll come just by people getting these incredible inspirations for exactly advancement that then, yeah, you know, there are so many scientific medical experiments right now for cures for things, for example, where it could just be lots of little last pieces clicking in for work that's been going, going on, for example. So. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, it's like, like with Elon Musk, I was, it's fascinating because you had, I think it was in Mexico just recently, you had this rocket come back down in the atmosphere and land itself in this platform that kind of locked in and held it in place. And at the same time, you have Elon Musk who had a rocket that just landed on the ground. And so there's two different scientists doing two different things, but it's showing up at the same time. But it's like, there are minds in the world. Elon Musk is not the only mind that thinks like that, but he actually only hires people to think for him. He's, he's he has all his <laughs> team of, of engineers and scientists that think for him. And then he's just the right. So, so, yeah. so there's a lot that's available. And uh, yeah, even my son's working on something right now that he just started off as like a little hobby. He's, he's a construction worker. He's an operating engineer, but somebody was like, what do you mean? Where did you come up with this? And he goes, it just kind of appeared. That's one so day. Cool. And so he's driving, somebody wants to see this. And my son only wants to explore the rights of it if it can be free for everyone. And it's his design is to give free internet to everybody in the world. And so wow. the, it's like this, he's like, no, I'm not going to give you. The... And the guy's like, but the world doesn't work like that. And my son said, well, then we're going to have to figure out how to make the world work like that because it should be free for everyone. So yeah. we've got minds like that. And my son will be the first to tell you, I don't know where it came from. Wow. Yeah. Well, just in that one little example, you can see what a big difference that would make and in the connectivity and in the opportunity. And yeah, so. Well, and the heart consciousness, right? Yeah. To also have the heart consciousness 
Oh, that's to, so, I mean, Aquarian yeah. all the way. So yeah, yeah, of course, the what's best for the community, what's best for all, one is has to be what's best for all. It's it's yeah. like humanitarian, more forward thinking. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. So when our astrologer friend, Chital was here twice this year and did the astro projections, we talked about this end of the year period and and I've said it in the energy too, being like a quarter. And I kind of hear you saying a different version of that where between this October 17th blue light surge that we're having and then the one in March, it just feels like this quarter of of maybe in the way we measure time that things will be shifting and moving and, and maybe undulating a little bit or feeling like we're getting our new footing. Is that, are you feeling it like that at all? Um, yeah, in some in some ways, and this is this is one of those questions that you ask that's really good at flushing it flushing it out. Because I know there's a lot of people who are listening to your podcast because it's a fantastic podcast, oh, thank you. and you're you're wondering how to conceptualize things. And what I want to share with you all who are listening, you already have the concept. Yeah. So. So what it comes down to is, um, I, I went to this museum and, and I, I, I got kind of enraptured by this 30 minute black and white video that someone made. I won't go into all of it, but, but this is the part that almost brought tears to my eyes. And she said, we're moving into a time where we're looking at the world through 18,000 realities with 18,000 eyes and 18,000 ears and 18,000 ways of feeling. And it was like, that's it. That's what's happening right now. And so if we're only used to driving our car on the right side of the lane and we don't look up and look around, it's like, well, what if I was looking at the universe right now or, or my life through 18,000 eyes? What would that look? If I was here, if I was listening to you, Joy, with 18,000 ears, like what would that sound like? I know that sounds like futuristic, but that when I heard her say that in that film, it dropped me into my body so deeply as truth. Yeah. So everybody has their answers. They just have to listen and see and know and be willing to expand. That's so beautiful. I mean, it goes right along with what you said with that lateral expansion, not so tunnel vision, not so linear, climb the ladder thinking. So it's it's a really, it's a really wonderful example. I love how those things just seem to happen. We happen upon something out in the world that just makes something else click in. So I think that's a really wonderful explanation. Well, and I had one of my advanced students say, is this going to be chaotic? Is it going to be dramatic? Is it going to be stressful? And I, at first I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't think any of us really know how it's going to be for the other person. But I sat with it in my morning meditation and I asked, and it said, whatever state you're in will get amplified. Yeah. Even as you were just saying it, the way, the way I was seeing it before you said about everything being amplified, it's like, well, it's an option on the table. It's, yep. If you're looking for, through 18,000 emotions, right? where are you going to be based on what truth is coming to light in your life based on, right. and then I guess it's in some ways back to that thing that we've always talked about in the work that we know, keeping up, up with your own side of the street. Like, are you cleaning around your own, you know, yeah. self? Are you are you in a good place? So you're not emotioning all over, you know, yeah. people and yeah. Yeah. Well, in the work that I'm called to do, it, it was interesting because I was having a dialogue with someone and they were saying, you know, well, we all are, we are all spirit. Like who's, who's asking spirit, the question, who's talking to the body, who's we're all spirit. So we just are. And I'm like, yeah. And that's great. You know, you've had all these classes and you, you've been able to arrive at these conclusions, but did you come out the birth canal like that? Like, yeah, 
did you know that you were just one soul? Well, no, I learned over time. And I'm like, right, I'm speaking to the people that can't get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. You know, I want you who can't get out of bed, who can't get out. It's like, you have the same knowledge as someone else who's had a gazillion classes. You have the same consciousness. Yeah, we have so access don't, to it for sure. Yeah. It's in the, right. It's in so the don't um, uh, undermine yourself, I guess, self sabotage yourself, but continue to listen to like joy, for example. You know, it's like listening to joy and the speakeasy podcast because she's fantastic at asking the questions that you might not even be able to formulate yet. And that's, but then don't make a steady diet of it. Then let yourself start getting your information. So I'm going to ask you a kind of a, a hard question. I know personally that there are several people listening who are, as you described, deeply in grief, really struggling, mm -hmm. having a tough time. Like it's a win if pants go on in the day, like right. just down in it, typically through a great loss of some kind or another. Um, sorry for the ambient noise. Uh, what would you say to them as they're listening to this? Where's the place to start? I know you have something on your website that you're going to offer people, but when someone is in that state, what's the first step, do you think? Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I do think about things quite mechanically. So as a, a nurse, and this is why I wanted to teach people, like there, there is actual mechanics that happen in the energy field that can, that, that can, you know, so like if you're thinking about your second chakra and you're down in that, that grief, I call it, you know, it's like, you must, you must learn, oh, what do I want to say? You want to be in that grief so that you can learn, but you can't, you can't live there. You can't make it a regular diet. And so what I always express to my clients, well, first of all, I call it taking the elevator to the top. It's like, you need to move out of the belly, you know, the belly of grief and move up to the center of your head because your pineal is where your spirit, I call it kisses the pineal and then illuminates the light throughout your entire life. And so what I will do with my clients who are in grief, it's like, take the elevator to the top, come to the pineal. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can breathe again. But this is the thing about heavy, heavy grief. It's heavy, right? It's yeah. going to pull you right back down again. So it's like, you just have to, it's like working that muscle. You have to keep coming to the top, but think about what has gotten you out of it before, you know? And so like, I remember with a friend of mine who went to therapy and said, life is going to happen. It's always going to happen. And it's not always going to be pretty, but what do you do when you feel like being uplifted? And this person said, I like listening to music. What kind of music? All right, write that down. Okay. What else does it? Lighting a candle. Okay. Like write that down. I like to paint you know, a journal. Okay. Write that down. So the next time you're in that state, reach for those things that do it for you. Yeah. And for me, it can be totally different. What does it for me? Yeah. And so, uh, but the, the people that are processing some of those deepest emotions, and I'm going to call it for the earth, when you're, you've agreed to process this big stuff, there are tools out there to help. And um, it can feel so personal, right? When you're hurting and you're yeah. in pain, it can feel so personal. Uh, but to take, and I think, you know, Pam Gregory, the astrology always says, take the eagle's perch, you know, or go into love. And and I'm not a big, I'm, just, I'm not a big love person. I'm an Aquarian. I'm like Dr. Spock on Star Trek. It's not logical, but people have been hurt by those who supposedly were supposed to love them. So that's not, might not always be the first place to reach, but if you can get just neutral and you can get out of getting that lighter place. Yeah. That's great advice. You said something that I think is super key also is when you find that better feeling, feeling, 
write it down what got you there because I know for me it's what I always encourage people when I'm in that darker place I can't think of it I can't reach we even remember so I have I always keep a list in my notes section called what's working right now because like you said it's not always the same so that's what great advice yeah But, but unrelated question well related to what we're talking about but um I want to go back to what you said a few minutes ago, how we all have access to the same collective information. Mm-hmm. If it's in the collective, we can learn to access it. Mm-hmm. We have access to it. Do you think part of this shifting and growth period that we're in as a collective, part of the suffering of humankind is our disillusion, the illusion, illusion of separation, right? That we are separated mm-hmm. from our highest self, separated from the collective, is that part of this great expansion and clearing away of what's not true? Because the illusion of separation would be not true, right? Yeah. So yeah. is that, am I connecting these dots? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Correctly? Uh. Yeah. And the suffering, so this is the thing, like we're coming out of, you know, I'll call it the, this 26,000 year cycle and anybody can you just type into Google 26,000 year cycle and you're going to have more information than you'll ever be able to digest, but it comes from the Mayans and the Mayan calendar, et cetera. So we're coming out of the dark ages. So the, we went through this 5,000 year cycle. I know I said 26,000, but 26,000 is dark, uh, dark ages, golden ages, dark ages, golden ages, dark ages, golden ages. All right. So we're coming out of this 5,000 years of, of, the dark ages of that overwhelming grief and sadness and trauma. And, and we're, it's almost like we're like babies on our hands and knees and we've just met the threshold. Like we're in the doorway and we haven't quite crawled into the golden ages. We're doing that right now, like in this three month period of time. And then in the three year period of time. And then I just heard somebody else say that leads into a 30 year cycle of time which if you think about 26,000 years, 30 years is nothing. So for those of you who are suffering, suffering is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but we just might not totally be there for a few more years, but that voice is getting quieter. And so we need to be excited. Like, do you know how many people ever get to live during this shift from the dark ages into the golden ages. Yeah. That was the golden ticket. We wanted that ticket. It's like, are you kidding me? I want to be there to witness it, you know? So, so it is a really exciting time. And, um, but there definitely are some heavy energies, but with the light codes that are coming in, it's, it's like a light codes, like a little wrench a little screwdriver. It's, it's helping us to adjust so that we can, so that the, the suffering will lessen it. I'll just share a quick story. So yesterday I'm talking to my team. We'll say I'm the creative outlet for my team. And then my team helps build the structure around what my dreams and desires are. I'm very blessed that way. And, and I've created a great team. We have a great team. So I tell my dreams, desires, and they start really dropping into that planning phase. Now we're into this two hours now, and I'm, I'm sitting there like doodling on my paper, like, do I really need to be here for this? So I could feel like I was getting really depleted and my spirit said, go higher, 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 higher. So it was like just uplift, 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 uplift. And I felt like I was as tall as the star beings. And they said, now, listen to what they're saying. And I said, okay. And they're like, does it bug you anymore? And I'm like, no. It's like that voice got really small. I could integrate it. So that's, what, that's what's happening to us naturally. We are expanding okay. in consciousness. Is there anything else we need to know to brace ourselves for or to get excited about for kind of now through that first part of the year that you were talking about? Um, it's like, be willing to 
to let your life change. Be willing to let go of those threads that you're hanging on to tightly. Because a lot of people are afraid I'm going to lose my family or my life will change with my kids or my husband or my wife or I like my job or whatever. And what the blue beings of light are saying is you're not changing in that way. You're just becoming who you were, who you are. Yeah. You're just becoming who you are. So I just want to assure everyone, like, they're not going to wake up, you know, on December 21st and can't see the earth beneath their feet. Like everything ha can appear the same, but it's going to be different. I don't know if we can even say it's going to be more real. I don't even know if we can say that, but that's what it feels like. Oh, I think it just depends on the words, right? The, yeah. the words that aren't right and the <laughs> We'll have yeah. more of a more of a, a lateral expanded understanding of what's real maybe. Maybe that'll be part of it. Yeah, and and none of us have the answers right now. Right, yeah. None of us have the answers. And all of us have the potential to gain wisdom and insight from the answers. So everyone has the ability to gain the wisdom. I have a couple more questions. You mentioned okay. earlier that now one of the things you're teaching is that everybody can work with this blue light energy, can learn how to bring it into their, you know, your favorite part, their physical energy. Can yeah, you the light share body. how people can access that or if you have a program that they can find to to teach them about that because I know everyone's going to be really excited about if I didn't ask I know I'd get the messages of like <laughs> wait a minute how do we work with the blue light well um so I have um uh, in in October and into uh November I was really uh teaching a lot about that about how to work with the blue beings of light how to work with more expanded versions of consciousness, how to work with the light codes, which they keep telling me one light, you can't just kind of get a book about light codes because one light code doesn't work for everybody. Everybody's got their own light codes. Uh, and so with that, I've really been learning a lot. So I, I haven't planned anything other than uh, on December 21st, I'm going to have my group reading that I've done for 24 years where I read, you know, a room full of people, virtual room full of people as if they are one person, but the blue beings of light are going to make a very, uh, big presence on that stage of the readings more than before. And they're going to participate in doing healing. So we're going to learn a lot from that. Uh, so I guess stay tuned. And you also uh, have the 30 day blue light awakening journey, right? Right. But by the time this goes live, it'll be passed. It will be passed. So you'll have the next thing, which is very But I'll have the next thing. And I, I do plan on doing something in the spring of 2025. But this is how it works for me when I'm working in that collective state with participants is that as you share and I share, like we are collectively under, we're adding our wisdom. So, yeah. so in that 30 day, uh, we're going to be learning a lot and then adding it to more what we will be learning December 21st at the solstice and then in the spring of 2025. So yeah. So exciting. I, it I is highly, exciting. I highly encourage everyone to find Nancy's YouTube, which is Nancy Rebecca, just search YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I'll link it in the show notes also, because you do a weekly update for people. Yes. And you're live talking about also often blue light updates. So will you talk a little bit about the things that you like, what do you share on YouTube? So people know, cause you're constantly yeah. updating this information. It's too fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so every Thursday is called the frequency forecast. So I really try to tune into the frequency of that week, but it's really tough because it all kind of spills over into the weeks and months ahead. But I really try to, you know, what's, what's the frequency happening this week? How is it influencing your life? How is it touching you in a way? What can you expect? And then I do a guided meditation. So that's every single Thursday Pacific time 
uh, in the United States at 7 a.m. So it's always 7 o'clock on Thursday. So that's always live. We have up to about 400 people live that show up every week. And then on Mondays, uh, I always release a video, and it has something to do with just being human. You know, what do you do with grief? What do you do uh, most recently about uh, that, that when we have pain, it inspires an internal growth and yeah, it, it's some tough topics to talk about, you know, yeah. why do we have to have pain to grow? And then on Saturdays I release and it's a lot about more about the blue light too, but the blue light is center stage right now. I'm always talking about the blue light. So anybody listening to the YouTube channel and I've got over 600 videos, you're going to learn a lot. And the blue lights, they've known the blue beings of light, all the star beings in the universe, of which there's 20, 30, 50, I don't know, thousands of different types of star beings that are all really watching our planet right now. And they're like looking down, it's like, okay, oh, they just dodged another one. <laughs> Oh, they just did great. Oh, look what they did there. Because what they keep telling me is we're ahead of schedule. And on any project that's being built, you're always excited to know you're ahead of schedule. And that's what they're telling me. But they do when I, that's why I haven't given a specific date about March, because this wave that we're in right now in the middle of, and then what's going to happen on December 21st, then they like recalibrate, recalculate. It's like, oh yeah, they're ahead of schedule. We can move up the date or we need to extend the date. So that's kind of where we are right now. Well, even kind of knowing that, you know, we had something on October 17th, a, a surge of energy. We had something on, we'll be having something on December 21st and then looking forward to March. I think those marker points are perfect. Yeah. Um, so that's really great. And for anyone who's listening, the time this is released, that December 21st event is just around the corner. But if you're listening to a replay or, you know, from a long time ago, you always are updating things. It's one of the exactly. things that inspires me about you so much is you really do have these meetings with your collective team and you really are receiving guidance and inspiration. And then I see you, I mean, I've known you for a few years now and yeah. I see you throughout the year putting in new um, whether it's a, a group energy reading that you're doing or whether yeah. it's an opportunity for people to get in the energy and mix it up themselves. Yeah. Plus you teach a whole program. So make sure to check out intuitivemind.org, which also in the show yeah. notes to find yeah. out what's happening with Nancy what's and what happening. she's got right, yeah. right now. Because yeah. I, I just can pretty much, unless some craziness happens, guarantee that you'll have something in March for what's I will definitely in have something in March. And when I had my out-of-body experience 30 years ago, they said, we need you to go out in the world and help people remember that they are souls and that they are spiritual beings. And so that's my calling. I, I was called by the highest of the high uh, to fulfill that path. And not all of us have a calling at that level, you know, but you all have a calling and it's up to you to fulfill that, you know, at whatever level, even if it's being a fantastic mother or homeschooling your kids or, you know, becoming the engineer you want to become, even though your family's never graduated from high school, you know, we all have our different uh, callings, but yeah, spirit provides me everything I need to constantly be producing more information. Yeah. And I want everyone to hang on to what we talked about earlier that, you know, yes, you have the calling of your soul. Yes, you do already know what it is, even if you don't feel like you do, even if it doesn't make any sense right now, you have right. your, you have your own information and you can, well, we'll yeah. see what happens with these shifts, but you can also learn how to work with it more intentionally. Right. And like being yourself. a gardener, you yeah. know, I mean, tending to the earth. I mean, there's, everybody's already this is what spirits always told me. The number one calling for, for every single person, all of humanity, is to ground the light into the earth. And if that is our main number one job, we are already doing it. Yeah. I think that's beautifully said. Is there any last thoughts you want to leave us with? Oh, no. I think everybody's probably their heads are spinning and they're like, <laughs> It's a lot oh. to digest. I know. <laughs> it's a lot to digest, but you know, and 
people ask me, I'm like, all I can say is my spirit is giddy. I don't know what's going to happen, but my spirit is giddy. It's excited. It's can't wait. It's like Christmas morning or it's like going to a fair or seeing your best friend you haven't seen in a while. You're just so excited. It's like, and I, I'm going with that. Yeah. I'm going with that. Well, I love it. Well, I appreciate you so much. I am so grateful that you agreed to return and have another chat and share <laughs> everything that you are learning with us. And thanks for being here and shining your yeah. light. Well, I love all the, the questions that you are spiritually led to ask because these are great times that we're living through, but sometimes they just don't feel so great. So thanks for being that voice in the night for many people. Oh, well, thank you. Oh my goodness. That was a lot of information. And I feel like we got some really good homework and we got some really good direction and things that we can be focusing on to really be available for this blue light energy for these surges that are coming in. I, as we're recording this, it's it's the day before October 17th. I, I didn't know if I was going to share that, but I am going to share it. So I'm so curious when this episode comes out to look back and see like what was going on on the surge day on the 17th. And then of course, how exciting that um, solstice event that Nancy has coming up on December 21st. I am thinking about attending that actually, because I love seeing her work and watching her read the energy. So really just preparing as we move through this transition time. None of us, of course, knows what it's going to end up looking like, what it's going to end up rolling out as. But I, for one, am super excited about this idea of lateral expansion, of more understanding, of being able to hold 18,000 perspectives or at least have more I don't know, more more expansion around it. I don't even quite have words yet. I feel like as I edit this episode, um, and uh, as I listen to it back when it releases, I'll still be processing too. So let me know what you took from this episode, what felt like it was the most touching for your heart, or maybe you even had, you know, some people when they listen to these episodes will have physical responses, either tingles or um, a, a, like a nudge or a sensation during one segment. So was there a part of this episode that spoke to you? Have you been feeling the blue light surges uh, already? And if you didn't check out the previous episodes with Nancy, I highly encourage you to do so. They're in the show notes, but just for everyone listening, they were episode 17, Messages from the Blue Light Celestial Beings with Intuitive Minds, Nancy Rebecca. And Nancy went into great detail about her gifts, her awakening, her early experiences with Blue Light Celestial Beings, and so much more. And then she came back for episode 45 for an update. That episode was called Update Blue Light Beings, Predictions and Light Code Upgrades Revealed with Nancy Rebecca, where she shared all about those light code transactions transmission she was sharing with us about today that happened over last summer and this one in the fall. So she talked deeply about the blue light beings and we really um, shook all of that up. So I highly encourage you to go back and listen to those if you want to learn more about Nancy, more about the blue light beings, or even just to check back on what happened in your life around those surges. How exciting. So Thank you for being here with me today. I hope that you have enjoyed this conversation. I really want to fill these next several weeks with um, preparing ourselves and getting excited for 2025. It's going to be a big year. Big hugs, lots of love. Thanks as always for being here with me inside Spirit Speakeasy. Mm -hmm.